Joe, did, did you hear anything? Uh, huh? I'm, I'm positive I just heard something drop. Uh, something drop? Yes, it sounded as if it came from Debbie's room. Uh, oh. Oh, I better get up and find out what's going on. Oh, my. One o'clock in the morning. Maybe she's sick or something. Well, let me find out. You stay here. I'll put my slippers on and go see. Oh. You wait here. I'm worried, Joe. <gasps> Daddy! Debbie, what are you doing up at this time of the night? It's one o'clock. I know, Daddy. But I promised Grandpa I'd give him his sweater I'm knitting... When we came up to see him this weekend. Well, I thought you'd already finished it. It wasn't really right. And I'm having to redo it. And I had so much studying to do tonight. I just couldn't get it done before now, Daddy. And, and I have to get it done. Well, I'm sure Grandpa wouldn't appreciate uh, your harming your health. Losing your sleep to make his sweater. But you've got to understand, Daddy. I promised him I'd have it done have to. Oh, if only I had had so much homework to get studied. Now listen, Debbie, I'm going to turn the light out. Now you put your knitting away and go to bed. But Daddy... Go to bed or you won't even be well enough to see Grandpa. Yes, Daddy. Now good night. <laughs> good night, Daddy. <laughs> good night. Our sweetest songs are those that tell a saddest thought, said the English poet Percy B. Shelley. If the poet would like to apply sweetness to sad songs, depression and sadness themselves are not sweet. The sense of personal failure, the personal trials, and all the other disappointments which go into causing depression are not sweetness. But they're not insurmountable either. There are practical ways in which depression can be fought. The Bible with its long experience in recounting and observing the weaknesses and foibles of the human race, has much to assist the depressed. Part of that is what we shall consider in today's program. It doesn't seem as if the fish are biting today. I don't understand it. Grandpa's pond has always been one of the best fishing holes around. Uh, maybe the fish have the same blues Debbie had all the way up here. Well, we can all suffer depression, Dave. There are all sorts of reasons and combinations of reasons. Among which is catching no fish in this pond. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really don't think it's that serious a depression to suffer. We'll have plenty of supper in spite of our fishless effort. Hold it, Dad. I think I've got something. Joe, Joe, I've got to see you. Well, what is it, Fran? Debbie's gone. I can't move as fast as you, Fran. <sighs> Debbie has disappeared from the house, Joe. Where did she go? She's disappeared. Gone. Hold it now, hold it. Let's get our thoughts together. What happened, Fran? Well, Debbie was working on getting everything for the salad together... And I, I walked out of the kitchen, and when I came back, she was gone. Not a trace. I've noticed she's been very quiet and seemed very unhappy ever since she got here. Uh, what has been her trouble? She's been staying up late a lot of nights, Grandpa. And also, I think, Sam, she's been worried that the sweater she gave you wouldn't make you happy. Wouldn't make me happy? <laughs> Nonsense. I couldn't be more delighted. Well, the girl hasn't been eating properly in spite of what we try to make her eat. We've caught her several nights staying up too late to get this sweater finished. Plus, she's had an extra load of work at school. I think it's been too much for her. I certainly wouldn't think it would arrive at this. Well, neither would I. Well, what do we do? Well, I would suggest, Dave, you and your mother go take a look in the woods on the other side of the stream. Uh, Debbie sometimes likes to walk there. Maybe Joe and I can go back to the house and see if we can pick up some traces from there. Good idea, Sam. All right, Joe. Well, 
We've searched the whole house. Not a clue. Joe, maybe we'd better split up and look around the grounds. All right, but frankly, Sam, this really worries me. I only hope we can help her. Oh, all of us can feel very depressed from time to time. Well, she still has to be helped out of it. Granted, granted. Before we look for her, Joe, I was just thinking how Jude had said, also continue showing mercy to some that have doubts. I know this scripture applies first to doubts about faith, but other doubts can be a discouragement. Doubts about someone loving you whom you want to love you. Serious doubts about yourself. Those can sometimes lead to depression. Well, don't worry. If I find her, before I bring her back, I'll try to reassure her, Sam. Be sure to. Now, why don't I scout a building nearest the house? I'm not as young as you are. Maybe you can circle around the other way to the side of the lake. she have gone? Well, I guess she must have really gotten Debbie. her feeling discouraged. Debbie! Where are you, Debbie? Debbie! No sign of her, Joe. Did you see anything? No, not a trace. Maybe Sam has had better hunting than we've had. She's never acted like this before, though, Dad. Well, Dave, when people get to feeling depressed or discouraged, they can do funny things. Especially if they don't understand what's happening to them or why it's happening and then fight it. You mean Debbie doesn't understand what's happening to her? Well, apparently schoolwork and Grandpa's sweater and lack of sleep and everything else just piled up on her, Dave. I imagine she wants to be alone for a little while. It doesn't sound right for her to act that way. No, it doesn't. That's why she needs encouragement. With a little, she'll probably bounce right back. Likely some sleep and reassurance, and she'll be as good as new. Debbie. 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 Oh, Grandpa. Everything seems so black. I'm so tired. I wanted so much to make your sweater look good. I was too ashamed to face you after... After it looked so bad. Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> Here, put your head on my shoulder a minute. Come on. Aren't you upset with me, Grandpa? No. I shouldn't have run off. I, I bet you know Mommy and Daddy are, are both worried. Yes, they are worried, Debbie. Because you're unhappy. And they know you're unhappy. And, no, I'm not upset with you, Debbie. But, but, Grandpa, how could you not be upset? I promised you, and, and I didn't keep my Debbie, promise. Debbie, for me, you kept your promise in a wonderful way. It is a beautiful thing you made with so much love. But I do know sometimes... The world seems to close in all about us. I know, Grandpa. Our better sentiments, our more noble ambitions, the small joys which seemed so joyful before, they all become suddenly darker and sadder. That's what depression is, Debbie. That's what you're suffering. But, Grandpa, it's true. Nothing is working right. I wanted so badly to to knit you a sweater you'd be proud well, of. Well, this is the first I knew I wasn't proud of what you made for me, Debbie. It's no use, Grandpa. I wanted to knit a design in it, and I couldn't. I tried, but, but I didn't have time. Debbie, <laughs> Debbie, listen to me. Do you really feel a sweater is what makes me happy? Or is it your love that makes me happy? Well, I... It seems everything is now so black and empty to you. 
But do you really feel you have lost the love of your father, your mother, Dave, or me? Has all your world changed overnight, my dear Debbie? Or has your way of looking at it changed? Oh, Grandpa, I don't know what to think. It's all so confused. How much sleep have you been getting recently, Debbie? Oh, pretty much. You know... Your face is telling me pretty much hasn't been enough. You've been up past your normal bedtime often, haven't you? But I had to finish the sweater. I just had to. And I have so much homework. And Oh, oh crap. I don't know what to do. I, no. I'm so miserable. Don't cry, <laughs> Debbie, dear. We all love you very much. But we want you to care for yourself. When you are tired all the time, it it becomes very hard to look at life optimistically. No sweater or anything else is worth your heavy heart to me. Yes, Grandpa. And remember, Debbie, how good Jehovah is to cheer us with his word. The orders from Jehovah are upright, causing the heart to rejoice, the psalmist said. And did you ever think the Bible's instruction to love your neighbor as yourself meant you would have to love yourself enough to sleep and eat properly? Not following that principle could make you sick or depressed as you are now. I guess I'm not thinking straight. It's only I'm so tired. I know that. Come on with me into the house. You can take a nap there, and things will look much brighter to you. Now take my handkerchief. Dry your tears, darling. And I'll go ring the dinner gong to signal your parents I found you. I'm so ashamed I got everybody upset. Well, I'll bet the world looks a lot different after a couple hours of sleep. I didn't realize how tired I was. Well, I hope you can learn a good lesson here, Debbie. When you feel depressed, one of the best things to do is to be sure your health is good and you're not tired. Now, that's part of loving yourself as your neighbor. That's exactly what Grandpa said. You can always study the Bible, too, for the good comfort its counsel gives. The only thing I don't understand, Debbie, is why you figured you should be ashamed to face Grandpa because of the sweater. I guess that's part of the funny way you look at things when you're down in the dumps. Well, now if we are going to keep you in good health, maybe we should start eating some of this meal you and your mother prepare. (laughs) A sense of personal failure, bitter disappointment, fatigue all contribute to the human feeling of depression. But depression can be fought. It can be overcome with the aid of the beneficial counsel of the Bible. The program All Scriptures Beneficial was produced by the Watchtower Society and presented by Jehovah's Witnesses.